Uh, thank you for joining us today on this Monday morning. Uh, my name is Oscar Misi, and I'm a pastor in Deliverance Church Moja. This is a great week for us as part of our calendar. I'll be talking about that uh, towards the end of my devotion today. But I want to ask you to, uh, if you're able to, um, you know, get your friends to join you as we watch wherever you are, I, maybe in this country, outside there, uh, whatever space you find yourself in, let's join together and study God's word in our devotion this morning. And I'll be picking the Gospel of Mark chapter 1, very interesting uh, chapter and, and part of a very interesting book that would be encouraging you to take some time and read this Gospel of Mark, which is a very short book that you could do in a day. We'll be reading Mark chapter 1 verse 14 to 15. That's what we'll be picking our teaching from. But let me just give you a small uh, brief background uh, of what Mark is all about. You see, the book of Mark is an action book. It is the shortest among the Gospels. The writer does not spend time outlining the details of the stories uh, that go on uh, in the ministry of Jesus Christ. The guy just swings into action and gives us the works that Jesus did. The miracles and the stories that characterize his ministry, that's why it's called an action book. Mark's gospel portrays Jesus as constantly on the move, forward motion, uh, you know, keep on going and, and doing stuff, uh, uh, changing uh, the environment, touching God's people, so on and so forth. And, 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 and in Mark, there's a key word that appears uh, so many times. The word immediately appears about 39 times in the book of Mark, giving us a sense that Jesus' time on earth was short and there was so much to accomplish in his few years of ministry. We hear that word immediately over and over again. Immediately, I healed this person. Immediately, this and this happened. You see, he doesn't even start with the genealogy of Jesus uh, like Matthew and Luke will do. He begins his ministry in Galilee, preaching about the gospel. You see, while Matthew portrays uh, Jesus the king, Mark reveals him as God's servant. Mark is feel, fills his gospel with the miracles of Jesus, illustrating again and again the power and the compassion of the Son of God. I want to say that again, that while Matthew portrays uh, Jesus as king, Mark reveals him as God's servant. He fills his gospel with the miracles of Jesus where he illustrates over and over again about the power and the compassion of Jesus Christ. Let's now read Mark 1, 14 to 15. This is what it says. It says, now after John had been taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The time is fulfilled. That's very key to us today. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Mark introduces us to Jesus preaching about the kingdom of God. And he does that uh, immediately. The Bible says after John the Baptist had been taken into custody, the leaders of the day led by Herod uh, apprehended John to silence and intimidate him from preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of salvation. Their aim was to spread fear and stop anyone who would want to carry on the work that John the Baptist was doing. I'm sure in them arresting John the Baptist, they knew that the end, that this was the end of preaching of the good news. People may have thought evil had won. Evil had overcome the good. People had, would have thought that the kingdom of, of, of darkness had now prevailed over the kingdom of light. People may have thought that injustice had prevailed over justice. And I'm so sure that the leaders led by Herod were chest thumping and gloating over their success and their victory of having John the Baptist arrested. The enemy was celebrating, thinking that the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of darkness, sorry, had overcome uh, the kingdom of God. Do you know sometimes the enemy is like that? That one or two things happens and the enemy thinks uh, that he's won, he's conquered. And sometimes we are tempted to think uh, when we're in such situations that maybe um, God has been overpowered or the enemy is winning and is having all the victory, but that's not the truth of the matter because the kingdom of God is so 
so powerful. You see, sometimes the devil talks and acts like he's gotten us. And I'm sure even in this season of COVID-19, the enemy may be whispering to your mind. You may be looking at things around you and you're like, the devil has gotten me. He's talking and thinking like, like he's gotten me. He's acting like he's had me. He's acting like he's overpowered me. Little does he know that when Jesus shows up in this scene, preaching the kingdom, talking about the dominion of God, he overpowers every other kingdom, every other, every other reign, Christ comes and overcomes and overpowers it. You see, it is in this environment that Jesus came preaching. He tells the people that the kingdom of God is so close that you can actually touch it. That's what he says. The kingdom of God is at hand. He's saying it is so close that you can actually touch it. It must have taken those in the earthly kingdom by surprise, wondering who is this who's come just after John the Baptist has been apprehended? How come he's so confident? How come he's speaking such a way? Doesn't he know that John the Baptist is in prison under the command and the direction of Herod? Doesn't he know uh, that Herod has, you know, ascertained again and again that by apprehending John the Baptist that, he, that he's the one who's sitting on the throne and nobody can go against what he's talking about. He comes and speaks in that environment. He talks about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the king's dominion. The kingdom of God is the authority of the king. In fact, that word kingdom is made up of two words, the king and dominion, meaning that the king has dominion over each and every space. And Christ comes and says, you know what? I'm preaching the kingdom to show you that I've got power, I've got authority, I've got dominion over this present kingdom. It is not Herod who is in control. No, it is I who is, who is in control. That's what Jesus was bringing out. Herod may have put John the Baptist in prison, but I am in control. I am in authority. I am the one who's all powerful, not Herod. I am the king. And that's why I'm preaching about the kingdom of God. Friend of mine, I want you to understand that wherever you are, whatever situation you may find yourself in, I want you to know God is in control. God is in authority. God reigns supreme over every king, over the Herods of this world, over every power that you can think of over any group that you can think of. God is supreme. God reigns. And he tells them this. Very interesting. He tells them the kingdom of God that I'm talking about is at hand. Like I said, he's telling them as it were, there's an opportunity that is so close to you. If you can stretch your hand, you can be part of this kingdom of God, uh, this dominion of God, this powerful kingdom of God. He tells them repent and believe the gospel. That's the key to the kingdom. You see, the word repent there, many a times we've limited it to repenting from sin, and, and, and it has some aspects to do with that. But the word repent is a Greek word uh, called metanoia that simply talks about making a U-turn, turning around, changing your mind. So to you who's not born again, God is saying repent, make a U-turn, and start going uh, in the opposite direction, in the direction of God. But for you who is born again, who is in the space that you're talking about, God is saying, yes, there's some aspect of repentance that you need to be involved in. Because sometimes when we go through stuff that is so difficult, we start thinking uh, that God has lost our address. We start thinking that uh, maybe the kingdom of, of darkness is reigning supreme, over, overpowering uh, that which God would want to do. God would call you and I to change our thinking to change our mind and to start thinking the way God thinks, to start agreeing with what God says. And that is repentance. God is saying, repent from what you've believed all along and start believing what God believes. And then he says, and believe the gospel. The word there is pistis that talks about faith. And the word pistis there has a, has a, implies a progressiveness. In other words, what Jesus is saying, that once you've been able to make a U-turn and you've identified the path of God and you're walking that path, keep growing in that faith. Make sure you keep growing in your faith. And as you keep growing in your faith, you will see the kingdom of God manifested because it is so close to you. You will see the demonstration of the kingdom of God manifested.
I want to just uh, before we bring this to a close to bring you bring to our attention a few things in the scripture uh, that shows us how Jesus demonstrated the power of the kingdom how he demonstrated uh, God's authority and power. The first thing that we've seen is that in his teachings, the people are saying, how come he's teaching like this? As a man with authority. He was teaching as a man with authority. You know, that he demonstrated uh, the kingdom of God. And then number two, we see him cast out demons. He demonstrated that he had power over the powers of darkness. And I want to talk to you. I want you to understand. Our God has got power over every power. He has got power over the heralds of this world. You know, he has got power over all evil forces. He can cast out demons. Any one of you who sit there and you're thinking, I may be bound by evil spirits, or you know somebody who's bound by evil spirits, I want you to understand, as you start moving in the power of the kingdom of God, one of the characteristics of the kingdom of God is that you will see deliverance from evil forces. In fact, you who's born again, you can speak to those evil forces because you're moving in that power and you can cast them out. The other thing that we see, we see him heal the sick. That, that's a characteristic of the power of the kingdom of God that shows you that Jesus has got power over every infirmity. Are you sick in your body? Child of God, as you listen to me, I want you to understand Jesus has got power over every infirmity. And that's how Christ characterized. He heals uh, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. He heals so many people uh, in the synagogue who are suffering from all manners uh, of sickness and disease. And I want you to know that even you where you are right now, Christ is able and willing to touch you and to minister to you. He has power over cancer. He has power over diabetes. He has power over COVID-19. He has power over tuberculosis. He has power over every sickness that you can mention in this present world. Remember, he comes in uh, when Herod is chest thumping and gloating and he says, I am preaching the kingdom. He's saying, I am the king. I've got dominion over Herod, and then he go, moves ahead and, and, and shows that he doesn't just have power over the political uh, establishment of the present time, but he heals the sick, showing them, you know what, I've got power over every sickness and every disease, child of God this morning. I want you to be encouraged. If you're there and you're sick, I just want to pray with you right now before I finish. God, may you touch that brother. May you touch that sister. We rebuke that sickness. We rebuke that disease in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare the kingdom of God is here. The power of the kingdom of God be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. The other thing that we see him do is that he cleanses the leper. Oh my goodness. He comes and takes somebody who, are, who was a social pariah, pariah, somebody who was a social outcast and cleanses uh, the leper. He's showing that I've got power to recreate. I can recreate any organ. I can recreate any body organ. I want you to understand if you're seated there, the doctors may have said we can't see anything inside of you. The doctors may have said, you know what, this one, uh, you know, I even given you, counted some days for you, some months. I want you to know God is able to recreate any and every body organ you're there. Uh, are you suffering from a condition either in your lungs? Uh, you know, it's your heart that has a problem. Uh, whatever that you're going through, God is able to recreate. May God recreate that body organ that is giving you uh, some challenges in your body right now in the name of Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is at hand. And the kingdom of God is about the demonstration of power and the authority of the king. It's about the supernatural and the miraculous in the name of Jesus Christ. I want you to know that even today, the kingdom of God is advancing forcefully. God is showing his power all across because our God is bigger than the biggest. Our God is stronger than the strongest. Our God is wiser than the wisest. And even that issue that you're going through, God is able to deal with it. Make no mistake. In this year, uh, the eighth month of the year 2020, with the challenge that we've been through, I want you to understand, open your eyes as you turn around, as you metanoia, as you build your faith and see God challenge every power. See God restore this year because our God is a God who demonstrates his kingdom through power, uh, uh, through miracles, to, through the supernatural. And as I finish, you could be seated there and you're wondering and you've been agreeing with so many people that we've seen saying, oh, this year is ended. There is nothing that will come up this year. This year may not turn around. I want you to understand as you submit yourself 
to this king. See him turn around your ear. We said before that our God is able to do in one day what he can do in a thousand years. And a thousand years can be done in one day. See him accelerate your progress this year. See him turn around in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to pray for you as we bring this to a close. May I pray that God will touch you and minister to you. Turn your situation around. May you experience the, the, the demonstration and the restoration of God's power in your life. See the kingdom manifested in everything that you're doing in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you're not born again, say this prayer after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner and I give my life to you. Change me. Write my name in the book of life. Satan, I no longer belong to you. I belong to Jesus. And if you made that prayer, there's a number that is scrolling down your screen. Call that number. We are waiting on the other side of the screen. We want to talk to you and help you to grow as a Christian in the name of Jesus Christ. At the beginning of, of the devotion today, I said this is an interesting and an exciting week for us as DCU Moja. Today at 6.30 p.m., we start our 2020 Days of Refreshing virtual conference. Join us at 6.30 either on YouTube, on Facebook, on Kingdom TV. Join us as our bishop uh, opens our conference this year. We are so convinced that in this year and through this conference, God will do great and mighty things. We have a great array of preachers and servant of, servants of God who are ready to minister to you from, to, from Monday at 6.30 in the evening all the way to Friday evening. You, you, your life will never be the same. Sit there, register. If you've not registered, talk to your friends. Make sure you're part of this powerful move of God that is doing in these days. Join us as DCU Moja and be part of, a, of DOR. God bless you as you join us. Have a week and a day where the kingdom of God is manifested in your life. In Jesus' name, amen.